to this point in working through problems from Chapter 2 of The Mathematics of Investment and Credit by Samuel Broverman. We've been mostly focusing on finding future values of annuities immediate, where the future value is evaluated immediately after the last payment. In this video, we're going to transition to finding present values of annuities immediate. In this case, find two, a common present value of two annuities immediate. You also might recall in the last video we briefly talked about annuities due. That will come up in later videos. So here is the problem. It is a fairly tricky problem, so you're going to want to pay attention. And I also want to derive a couple of formulas, one that we've used already for the future value and a new one for the present value. We've got an effective annual interest rate of I, and both of the following annuities have a present value of X, and the goal is going to be to calculate X. We've got First of all, a 20-year annuity immediate with annual payments of 55, and secondly, a 30-year annuity immediate with annual payments that are going to occur in stages 30 per year for the first 10 years, 60 per year for the second 10 years, and 90 per year for the final 10 years. All right, before I get into solving the problem, let me go ahead and uh, derive a couple formulas. I'm going to draw a timeline. And this timeline line is going to start at time zero. Time zero in years, that's going to end at time n. Um, I have said this, annuities immediate can be thought of as, okay, if I'm starting at time zero, I'm going to make my payment or deposit at the end of each year. So I'm going to have a bunch of ones here starting at time one and ending at time n. The future value of this at time n immediately after that last payment is SN. We think of that as the future value for this annuity immediate. Since I'm thinking of starting at time zero and having these payments be at the end of each year, for the present value I want to discount these back in time to time zero. The present value of such an annuity immediate is going to be one year preceding the very first payment, and the symbol for it is AN. All right, We have seen the formula for SN. Let me derive it this, in this time, in this video, um, assuming that you know how to add up a finite geometric series. Sn, you're finding the value of all of this stream of payments at time n. We need to push them forward to time n and promote them. Uh, starting, going from right to left, say you have an initial uh, value of 1 for this payment at time n. The preceding value at time n minus 1 goes forward in time by 1 year, so its future value is 1 plus i. The next preceding value at time n minus 2 has to go forward in time 2 years, so its future value is 1 plus i squared, etc. The very first payment at time 1 needs to go forward in time n minus 1 years, so its future value is 1 plus i to the n minus 1. This is a finite geometric series, initial starting term 1 and common ratio 1 plus i. It's going to equal the first term 1 times the common ratio raised to a power equal to the number of terms. Now I'm starting with 1, which can be thought of as 1 plus i to the 0 power, so there are n terms here. This needs to be a power of n. Subtract 1 and divide by that common ratio by itself minus 1. Bottom simplifies to just i, the ones cancel, and the formula becomes our familiar formula, 1 plus i to the n minus 1 over i. What about now this present value, a n, for this annuity immediate value found one year preceding the very first payment? We've got to pull these amounts back in time. Instead of using the growth factor of 1 plus i, I need the discount factor of v. The very first payment at time 1 needs to go back in time by 1 year, so its present value is v. The second payment at time 2 goes back 2 years. Its present value at time 0 is v squared, etc. The last payment at time n needs to go back in time n years, so its present value is v to the n. This is also a geometric series with first term v and common ratio v. It will equal the first term times the common ratio to the power equal to the number of terms, there are n terms here, minus 1 over the common ratio minus 1. That is what the sum is, and it turns out that this can be simplified 
um, to 1 minus v over i. And the reason is because v over v minus 1, um, it turns out, is equal to negative 1 over i. To see why that's the case, we can replace v with 1 over 1 plus i, like this, and simplify by multiplying the top and bottom by 1 plus i. After cancellation, we get this. It equals negative 1 over i. Therefore, that's why this formula for a n can be simplified to this. Okay, and that's going to be another formula you're going to want to use a lot. Oops, there's a mistake there. This should be to the n power. All right, um, so now I've derived those formulas. Let's go back and solve the problem now. We want to find x that is going to be the present value of both of these annuity immediates. Uh, focus first on A, annual payments of 55, the present value of those 20 payments is going to be 55A20. Okay, let's not bother writing that in terms of V and I, let's just leave it as is at the moment. That's got to equal the present value of the other annuity that's made up of three pieces. The present value of the first 10 payments over the first 10 years is going to be 30A10 right, because you've got 30 per year for the first 10 years. Gets trickier from this point. The present value of the second group of payments, 60 per, per year for the second 10 years, well, careful, its present value at time 10 would be 60 A10, but that's at time 10, because those payments start at time 11. I need to discount that back in time another 10 years. I need to multiply by V to the 10th. The last group of 10 payments, 90 per year for the final 10 years, if I wrote 90A10, that would be its present value at time 20. I've got to pull that back in time another 20 years. I need to multiply that by V to the 20th. Okay, so both of these things are equal to X, and we've got to find X, so it might not be clear what to do. It turns out that at least one way you can solve it is to write A20 in terms of A10 and then cancel all the A10s. How can that be done? Well, what is A20? A20 would be the present value at time zero of um, payments of one starting at time one. That can be broken into two pieces, the first 10 payments and the second 10 payments. Here's the first 10 payments, here's the second 10 payments. It can be thought of as A20 being the present value of the first 10 payments plus the present value of the second 10 payments, its value at time 10 would be A10. I need to discount it back to time zero. I need to multiply by V to the 10th. Therefore, this can be plugged in here. We can cancel all the A10s. What's left over is 55 plus 55 V to the 10th equals 30 plus 60 V to the 10th plus 90v to the 20th. And now we have a quadratic equation in v to the 10th. We can divide everything by 5 to simplify it a little bit. We can rearrange and subtract 11 and 11v to the 10th from both sides. We can write the quadratic equation as 18v to the 20th uh, plus v to the 10th minus 5 equals 0. Now I can use the quadratic formula to solve for v to the 10th. The plus square root is going to be good enough. Let's see, 4 times 18 times negative 5, that is going to be positive 360. Over 2 times 18, we're going to get the square root of 361 is 19. 19 minus 1 over 36. This is 1 half, 0.5. So v is going to be 0.5 to the 0.1 power, raising both sides to the 1 tenth power. 0.5 to the 0.1 power is about 0.933. Let me store that in register 0. Store register 0. I ultimately want to use this formula here now. 
maybe with this part right there. I also need I. Um, if I take the reciprocal of V and subtract 1 from it, that is I. Let me store it in register 1. I is about 0 0.0717346. So now I can finish the problem. I want to solve for x. x is 55a20. I can use the formula that I showed you. a20 is going to be 1 minus v to the 20th over i. Let's find v to the 20th. v is in register 0. Raise that to the 20th power. How about that? It comes out exactly 0.25. Subtract that from 1, and it's 0.75. Divide by i, which is in register 1 and get about 10.4495. Finally, multiply by 55. The answer is about 574.72. That is the answer to the question. That is the present value of both of these annuity immediates. That is x. So that was a pretty involved problem, and I made it longer by deriving these formulas, but I think that was worthwhile. That is something I think you should be able to do using knowledge about the formula for a finite geometric series.